What's up everyone? Welcome back to George's Gadgets. Today we're going to be talking about the TiVo Tarantula and some brackets and then also a new Z-axis to hopefully make it more sturdy for you. And I'll show you how I implemented that and maybe some of the things that I ran into that were issues. And also, great news, my MK3 just came in, so I'm going to be having a video come out with that build and first tests and just talking about all the cool things that you can do with that. So stay tuned for that and I'm not going to blabber on anymore, let's just get to the video. Oh yeah, it's back, the TiVo Tarantula. But uh, let's wait one second. Check out that bed. Look at this card for the video of the upgrade. So we're talking about the Z-axis in this upgrade. I wanted to replace these flimsy acrylic parts because I don't like how you can actually move them. And it's also slanted, if you see here, and the coupler that holds the threaded rod is bent. So I wanted to fix that issue. And something I didn't do in my previous videos that I want to start doing is giving credit to the people of the parts that I'm, I use. So Thingy Rob made all the brackets that I use in this, and they're great. I really recommend them to anyone. Um, he has a huge following on Thingverse, and the link is in the description down below. Then we're going to talk about DC-03's Z-Stabilizer. You use a bearing to hold the threaded rod and it stops it from moving around. It's kind of like having um, a smooth rod next to it so that it holds it stable. It works really well and it helps with the Z-banding as you can see in this picture. I recommend it, so check this one out. And the last thing that we're going to be using is going to be Kisselore's, excuse me if I'm butchering that, no sanding old ham bracket. So this helps with deviations in the threaded rod and prevents um, Z-banding as well. All right, so we're gonna pull these in the slicer and arrange them, and then we're gonna throw them onto the SD card so that we can bring it over to the Prusa and get it ready for printing. And after a night of waiting, you wake up to beautifully printed parts. Let's get started working on this thing. Let's bring it over to the workbench and get everything situated. So these are the parts I'm gonna be using. This is the Z-Stabilizer by DC-03. This is Kisselore's no sanding old hand bracket, all the different pieces that we're gonna need and some extra fidget spinner bearings that I've had laying around. The assembly of this was pretty easy and you can see there I printed out actually all of his instructions just to make sure that I was doing it correctly. And the screw set that I'm using, I put an affiliate link down below. If you want to get a screw set just like this, go ahead and use the affiliate link. It'll help me out and it'll help your projects out. As you can see here, this is the final product of how it should look like assembled. The guides just slide really easily into the, the top and bottom pieces, and you use the smooth end as the part that's going to be facing towards the bearing. Something that I was worried about when I first pulled it off was I saw the notch, but the notch is supposed to be printed face down, so there will be bridging, but that's so that the bearing can sit in there. Taking this off took really long, and this is time-lapsed, so it took me like 10 seconds here, but it took like 5 minutes in real life. I was like, what the heck? And I was super happy with Thingy Rob's uh, Z-brace, or Z-bracket. It's really sturdy, and there is absolutely no bending like there is on the original acrylic piece. So to hold all the brackets in place and all the parts, I'm using these slide-in, basically what the T-nuts are, but these ones slide in and they're easier to position. There's also an affiliate link down below if you want to get those. It makes installing all these parts a lot easier. I'm just screwing in all the, the brackets, and this is just a different view. I wanted you to see how they actually work. So instead of a T-nut where you have to like twist it in and put it in exactly, this one you can set it, set it up and then uh, just slide it to where you want and I use the allen wrench to kind of position it better but my recommendation is to get like a really powerful magnet and if you put the magnet over the bracket you can just slide the nut back and forth all of the parts except for the stabilizer and the old ham no sanding bracket were printed out in hatchbox ABS but the old ham and the stabilizer were printed out in AIO robotic filament. 
I think that it's great. And they have a package deal that they offer on Amazon so that you can get a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different rolls for a discount. So I have those links down below if you want to check that out. So now that I have the threaded rod all assembled and the old hand assembled, I just put it back onto the, the stepper driver. After I attached the threaded rod with just the old ham and thingy rods bracket, I was really happy with how it turned out. And I was debating on whether or not I should use the Z stabilizer, but I decided since I have it and I have a million extra bearings, I might as well. It was difficult filming this video because I had a top-down view, so I wanted to give you guys different views, and this is kind of what it looks like as I'm assembling the Z stabilizer. I'm gonna use a BL touch in the future, so right now I'm setting up that end stop and then I realized after, you know, 30 minutes of trying to get it just right that I didn't need it. So I ended up taking that off and I had to expand the holes so that the, the screws would slide in easier. And also Thingy Rob's bottom bracket is not designed to work with this, so I used the Dremel tool just to trim part of the part. After I trimmed it, it fit just fine, and I just had to use some of the extra long M4 screws that I had in my kit. And this is where having a magnet would really help positioning those sliding nuts. I was trying to use that DeWalt, but it just wasn't powerful enough, and I didn't have an extra one laying around anyway. So what I ended up having to do is lay it on its side and then try and slide them by just tilting the printer. And it was a pain in the butt, but I eventually got it. Please don't make fun of my hairy hobbit feet. You have to make sure that the rod is straight and make sure that you tighten down the piece that's actually connected to the X axis. And this is it. This is how it looks finally. I think it turned out really great. And as you can see, there is no bending of that coupler, which is amazing. These are the brackets that I printed out that Thingy Rob designed. I think they're spectacular and they really make the whole frame more sturdy. Tell me what you guys think about how it came out down below. Alright guys, I had a blast making this video for you and as always I hope to see you next time. Please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video.